Vedinathan, Indian Express. No, no. Vedinathan, Indian Express. So, uh, you know, one thing when you look at the entire text of the uh, G20 leaders' uh, statement, you know, one or two things which kind of puzzle me are, uh, you know, the WTO Director General saying that all the infringements which 17 countries out of 20 members have done are well within the means, you know, which means that you know, protectionism is not really high on the agenda. And the other one, which, which Mr. Brown also talked about in the press conference today, and the other was about this global, stimuli, global stimulus package, a coordinated effort to fiscal stimulus. You know, yes, we have you know, $1.1 trillion coming into the global economy, but how much of it is all developed and developing countries pushing their economy together? Well, I think that only time can tell. But you have, for the first time, a statement by the major powers of the world that they recognize that they have a cooperative responsibility to put their shoulders together to revive the world economy. The as far as protection is concerned, I think it's a fact. Although 17 out of 20 countries had, I think, infringed the Washington uh, communique, the WTO itself has said that the amount involved are not very large, so therefore the problem still can be contained if there is a determination to do so. And the summit has endorsed that protectionism is bad, and I do hope that it would have a salutary effect. From our point of view, we have highlighted that protectionism is not merely protection of goods, but protectionism of services, protection, protectionism in financial uh, services is also something which is worrisome. And I think that has also to be attended to. We know, for example, that many of the banks in the developed countries who have received help from their governments to solve their problems are not lending to developing countries. That is also protectionism. We also know that some branches of the foreign banks in our country have stopped lending to Indian entities. That also is protectionism. So I hope that all this protect the, uh, protectionism in all sorts will, I think, be looked down upon by the world community. All India Radio, the Vinda Malik. Sir. My question is that during your first meeting with U.S. President Obama, what was the, whether the issue of H-1B visa was discussed as far as the Indians in the U.S. are concerned? Well, I raised the issue of protectionism in general. Uh, I did not go specifically into H-1B visas, but I did raise the issue of protectionism. And we both of us agreed that everything in our power has to be done to roll back protectionism. Pavan Kumar, Z. To the side. Let the mic come to you. The uh, uh, tax uh, heavens, uh, I mean, it has been discussed uh, at length over here. Uh, the, you know, Indian community, uh, there the uh, recently, uh, Lal Krishna Admani raised the point, uh, the black money. So whether you have discussed with any of the leaders here, uh, particularly or uh, in general or particularly with uh, the European countries or uh, something like that? Yes, if you look at the communique, there is an explicit reference to tax heaven. Also that information with regard to tax heaven, tax, tax matters should become available. I, I think that's the direction in which we should move. If information tax relating to tax matters becomes available to all governments, I think the problems that have arisen with regard to tax heaven would disappear. B.S. Arun, Deccan Herald. Sir, here. Sir, in your uh, speech last night, you had expressed fears that if um, measures are not taken immediately, uh, the recovery by even by 2010 would be difficult. Now, with today's statement, are you hopeful that uh, uh, these fears have receded? Well, I'm certainly more hopeful now than I was yesterday. 
Yesterday, if you had looked at the newspapers, you would have noticed people were highlighting the divergence in the viewpoints of the French, the Germans, the Anglo-Saxon. Fortunately, I think those differences did not surface, and the committee as a whole has endorsed the package. I think that augurs well for the re future recovery of the world economy. Sushil Chaudhary, <coughs> Dainik Ganadut. Sir, sir, what is the main and important contribution to G20 from India? Pardon? What is the main and important contribution to G20 summit from India? Well, I think we are part of the 20 countries. We have made important cont contribution. Our concern was that the developing countries' problems should not be lost sight of, that the resource flows so which have declined uh, they should be made good by increased multilateral flows, and that's why our emphasis on increasing the resources of the IMF, the increase in the allocation of the STRs, increase resource flows becoming available from the World Bank, uh, increase in quota of the Asian Development Bank, of which we will be direct beneficiaries. So all these measures are, I think, as a result of efforts we made, I'm not saying we were the only one. I think many other developing countries felt alike, and the fact that the developing countries felt strongly, I think we were able to get an endorsement of resource flows of $1.1 trillion to the developing countries through multilateral development institutions, including the IMF. The last question, Jayant Ghoshal, An An Anand Vazar Patrika. <coughs> this side, sir. Yesterday, uh, we got your copy of the joint communique. Sir, my, I found a lot of strong similarities in these two. And what you said yesterday on protectionism, on the role of IMF, uh, even this uh, surveillance issue also you mentioned, monitoring, and the uh, global uh, regulation, relevance of global regulation. And in the joint communique, I found that the follow-up of your uh, yesterday's speech. Influenced the draft of the communique uh, today. Well, I think I, I would put it differently. I would say all right-thinking men think alike when, uh, when dealing with global issues of great, of great seriousness as the revival of the world economy. You have given any speech today in the summit, and yesterday you have said all these things. And because I, I was given the chance last night by Prime Minister Gordon Brown, first President Obama spoke, then he asked me to speak. And the agreement was that if you speak at the dinner, you will not speak in the plenary. So I got a chance to speak, and I got a chance to speak early enough, and I thought I should have my say, and so that it could reach the gentlemen of the press in time. 